Um, so, for those of you that don't know who are active Cheshire, so I'll introduce myself first actually and then we'll go into that bit. So I'm Hayley Breeze, um, I am a sports science background, so I'm in the final phases of finishing my PhD in sports science physiology at the moment. So I'm working with Alice at Netball Play, they do it through Staff Uni, and I've probably worked for Active Cheshire for about the last uh, six months, just under six months. So Active Cheshire are the local charity that look to reduce physical inactivity in the area. And there can be a lot of speculation as to what we mean by physical activity. It doesn't mean putting on your gym wear and going out for a run or joining a sports team. Yes, that is being physically active, but we're just talking about getting your heart rate beating a little bit faster than it would be when you just sat down at rest. So it is just sometimes moving your arms around, sometimes standing up and sitting down, sometimes going for a short walk, and that elevation of your heart rate is physical activity. So our main aim as an organisation is to reduce physical inactivity by 15% by 2040. So as an organisation, that's what we're working towards. We've been going for 30 years, we're celebrating our 30th um, birthday this year. So the name has changed a few times with slightly different aims and ambitions, moving slightly more away from sports and sports clubs and slightly more towards physical inactivity. Um, so, yeah, that's us. So, you guys, <laughs> can does anybody know what the guidelines are from Sport England with regards to physical activity at different ages? So does anybody know what 0 to 18, what the guideline is for a child's physical activity. What, in terms of how many hours? Daily, yeah, in terms day. of minutes, day, uh, hours, whatever. So two hours daily? Or Slightly day. less, yeah. yeah, so it's 60 minutes of physical activity per day for children, uh, and that's up to the age of 18. From 18 to 60, I want to say 64, can anybody hazard a guess weekly? And this then goes to moderate exercise, so this is slightly more actually moving and walking a little bit more, and actually maybe a slightly longer distance, but moderate. Seven in steps. In steps. We aim for 10,000 a day, yeah. don't we? Yeah. But that would actually be way exceeding your guidelines for oh, sport right. England. Right. Three and a half hours or something a week? Three and a half, what would that look like? Two, six, twelve. Half an hour Slightly less. Yeah, it's actually slightly less than that. It's about, what were you going to say? 150. Yeah, it's 150 minutes per week. Uh, which, when you break it down to two and a bit hours, my maths not great. <laughs> two, minutes, two hours, ten minutes, that's not that much really, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you think that a lot of our population still classes physically inactive, which means that they're not hitting that 150 minutes per week. Yeah. Which that's is quite easily done though, isn't very it? Very easily done. You know, I mean, if you've got a very inactive job, very, very easily uh, done. you're not, if you perhaps you're not running around after children anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, just walk into your car. Hmm? Just yeah. into I, your I definitely yeah. fell into that. I, I literally went from house to car to, you know, and it was just yeah. a couple of steps, you know, from the, you know, it, it was, you know. And it's just so easily done, so isn't it? Easy. I can, I can sometimes, because we wear Fitbits um, as part of our uniform, <laughs> as part of our uniform, and quite easily sometimes at the end of the day I can look at my Fitbit and I've probably done about two, three thousand steps. Yeah. And that's at six o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's it's so easily done. Just because you get lost in it, you sat down, you have no idea where time goes, mm -hmm. and yeah, so it's it's so easy not yeah. to do that every week. And the time of the year as well that makes it harder. It makes is a massive much harder. because you come in and you just don't want to, you don't want to go out in order to move if it's the middle of cold winter's night. Do you? Yes, that's absolutely. Thing. So. Uh, what, there is a slight difference, I'll just share that one with you, a slight difference, over 65 is exactly the same except they ask for two strength based uh, sessions or uh, something per week and that's just to help with sort of mobility, joints, osteoporosis prevention, maintaining strength with age and effects. Uh, this is for England guidelines for physical activity, just to catch you off. <laughs> so, if you want to, we can either, I didn't know how many we'd have, so I did have you closing your eyes and pop your hands up. But if you feel comfortable with each other, pop your hand up if you honestly think that you complete 150 minutes, uh, yeah, 150 minutes of physical activity every single week. Do now. Do now? Do now? No. Yeah. That's so a we, conscious effort. Yeah, conscious effort. Yeah, you do have to make it a bit more of a conscious effort because it's just so easy to just fall under that. But we all do, I mean, I'm sure we all have points where we go to the beach and we lie on a sunbed for endless hours a day. But you do a bit of walking in the evening, don't you, around the bars and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, physical activity barriers. So, 
there is a two million gender difference between males and, males and females. So there are two million more females that are classed as physically inactive than males. Um, and 13 million women that have been questioned said that they wish that they were physically active, mm -hmm. uh, more physically active, sorry. Six million of those were classed as inactive, which means they're not hitting that, that threshold. Now, I know I'm generally quite good at being physically active, but even I put my hand up and say I'd like to be more physically active because I know day to day at work I can be sat down for long, long periods of time. And not through work's fault, because they promote us to get up and moving, but you just get lost in it, don't you? And you forget, forget where you are a little bit. Um, so, what are your barriers? We can just do it by a show of hands, or we can get standing up and you can get yourselves moving a little bit during this. So, what do you think your barriers are, or women's barriers are? Family or childcare? Stand up or hands up if you think that that has ever been a barrier to stop you <coughs> doing exercise. Yeah? yeah? And if that is, do you think your hand could go down if we said, while well, you take the boys or the girls to, to football practice or netball practice or cricket practice, what if it's a parent walking group that's going on at the same time? So while your kids are in session, rather than standing and just watching them train, what if there's a walking group that goes around the field? Would that help counterbalance it? <coughs> and then you start thinking, could I actually initiate that? Could I say to the parents, right, instead of standing there, should we just go for a little walk? My friend, um, she, she takes her daughter to swimming, yeah. uh, which is an Twitch bath, so she goes in the gym yeah. for that kind of hour while she, my daughter's doing That's it. that. I mean, they've tried to do that. They've tried to make it more accessible so the gyms are closer to areas that kids mm -hmm. exercise, but gyms don't appeal to everybody as no. well, so we have to make no. sure that we... We are appealing to the fact that not everybody wants to go and lift weights and wear line through, as we put it. <laughs> Next one. Anybody say that they don't enjoy it? Does the thought, if I said to, I play netball, the thought, if I said, go whack a netball dress on and go and get on the netball court outside, does that horrify anybody? A little bit, because I like to, I actually, um, Bit when it comes to yeah. <laughs> See, and we appreciate that honesty, and it's making sure that people understand. Okay, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. So, what is it that I can do? So then, that means for you, it is. Uh, I like a nice quote. There you go. Here comes in. <laughs> the world out. Don't have time. I think it's for a lot of people, that is the jump to answer. I don't have time, but it's about making time. It's about. Doing things that are slightly different in terms of using the stairs rather than the lift. How much time do we save by jumping in the lift to come up to the first floor over popping down the steps? Mm -hmm. Doesn't say, unless we physically can't, in which case, you know, some cases that is, is the case, isn't it? Unless we physically can't, how much time is that really saving us? And it's just little decisions like that that can be really, really life changing. Mm -hmm. um, our CEO went to something at Weaver Vale really recently and a guy was so happy sharing his story um, that all he's changed is the fact that he, he walks more. All he does is walk more, all he does is refuse to take lifts and takes the stairs and he's lost eight stone. Mm -hmm. and it's a part of it somewhere a bit differently, isn't it? Yeah. About just going that one little step yeah. further. How many know? people would think to, oh, I need to go get some milk when this is finished today? How many people jumping. would jump in the car and drive to Asda? Just because it's convenient, yeah. but actually we've got that beautiful park right out the back now where there's some lovely play boxes from up to Cheshire you might see as well. <laughs> I launched them, that's why I'm biased. <laughs> um, that you can walk through that beautiful park and you'll be at Asda nearly as quick as it would take you to actually get in the car and wait at the traffic lights at the top of the hill. And if you get in a big shop, I can completely understand it, but it is, it's, it's making a conscious decision to just make a slight difference. Feel judged. How many people feel judged when they do exercise? I, I'll put my hands up, I do. I wish I could run more outside, but I feel too self-conscious running outside to actually go for a jog. But then it's what we do about that, and that's what we do as women, as a community, supporting one another to overcome that feeling of judged. We shouldn't feel judged going out on the streets and going for a jog. So what can we do to support that? And then lack of awareness. I think sometimes we just don't think. You just, you just get in your car or you go somewhere where you have no idea where these groups and where these things are going on. Uh, and there are loads of services out there. And if you do look them up or if you do ever come to us, we will always help you try and find um, what suits you best or come up with solutions if you want to be more physically active of things that we've trialled and tested in the past. So, 
talking of things that we have tried and tested in the past, this is just a really quick video um, of something that we did around Cheshire Road. I don't know whether any of you any you've heard about it, the Cheshire Girls Cam Project. No? I'll play the video anyway. Try to keep it nice and easy. And what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to show you soon. Good for mental well-being, good for physical well-being. A couple of quid to make and you might this is this you can do your exercise, which again we know is really positive for mental well-being. Hi, my name is Teresa from Fab Fitness. So we're here today to work with the wonderful ladies from the This Girl Can Cheshire project, which is being funded from Active Cheshire. I got involved with Cheshire Girls Can basically by working in the salon and listening to women from the local area talking about how we'd like to get more active. Everybody knew what they wanted to do, but they didn't quite know how to get there. So I got in touch with Active Cheshire and we decided to set up a Cheshire Girls Can in the local community. I'm Kath from Active Cheshire. Active Cheshire are funding a programme called This Girl Can Cheshire. It's about a team of previously inactive girls looking to change their lives for the better with support from Active Cheshire. To choose the candidates for this girl can, uh, I run a Facebook competition for my business page and basically the women had to write in and say why they'd like to become more active. So ladies, let's get our shoes on, our trainers on. We're going to go and shake our tail feathers. My name's Hannah, I'm a customer service assistant. I've got two boys. Before starting this program, I used to live on crisps and chocolate, maybe eat one meal a day. I've now changed that to at least two. I'm more active. I used to get a taxi to work every day, which was costing me £10, and now walk at least one of them, so I'm proud. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm a full-time parent of care with my little boy. Before starting this program, I didn't really take any time for myself. Now I've made sure that I take some time out, a rest, make sure I eat regular meals and also exercise as much as I can. Hi, my name's Rachel. I'm a care assistant. I have three children. Um, before starting this programme, I was really unfit. Didn't really do anything at all. I ate loads of fast food. Didn't really do nothing. But since changing and I go to boot camp, I've changed my food. Um, I drink a lot more water. I'm just enjoying feeling better about myself. Hi, I'm Natasha Johnson, currently a student nurse. I have a five-year-old son and before starting the programme I was unmotivated and didn't eat regular meals. And since starting the programme I have at least three hours of fitness a week, have thrown the chip pan out and making healthier choices for me and my family. So 22 girls were chosen randomly and they've completely changed their lives. They've made a lifestyle change now, so not just for them but for the children as well. So it's been a fantastic thing, even I've done it. So the ladies have been on a huge journey, but let's hear from them themselves. Well, it's three months since I started. I've actually changed quite a bit. I'm eating three consistent meals. It's natural for me now to eat. Loads more energy. I am still walking back into work. My kids have got into this as well and started doing exercise. They've put me to shame, they're doing sit-ups more than me. Unfortunately, I've had to leave the group now due to my son's busy schedule, but I've taken on board everything that Active Cheshire, this girl can, and Teresa have taught me, and I'm using it in everyday life. I'm exercising more, taking time for myself, and making positive choices when it comes to food and cooking at home. I've started to a local gym. I've been going swimming. I feel really a lot more energetic, can do more want to do more, and I don't know what else to say. Uh, hi, my name's Catherine. Um, I joined the group in April. Um, I've got two lovely girls at home, uh, one of whom is disabled, so she takes up quite a lot of my time. Recently, I've started doing a lot more exercise, do a lot of walking. Um, I go to a class on Friday. A lot of healthy eating as well. My artist will tell you her favourite food is sweet potato mash. They also love doing their exercise with me as well, so that's a fantastic thing for them. The ladies now are arranging to meet up together. They go for walks with their families and their children, discussing fitness, discussing nutrition. They're ready to go off on their own and be at one with their well-being. So that's just a little example of one of the projects that we've done before. Um, and I think... <laughs> I think one of the really important things to take from that is those women didn't 
they didn't go to try and get fitter or to lose weight or to get more physically active. They went to change their lives and actually by getting more physically active that impacted on the whole family. And what we don't realise as women, in, in our household we are key influencers. So by the women taking more time and making um, set meals or preparing snacks, um, it was visible that at the start of the session, fortunately I wasn't there to witness it in person, but at the start when the kids were showing up with bags of crisps and sitting in a corner with bars of chocolates and bags of crisps towards the end they were showing up with chopped carrot sticks. And it was just little differences like that where they would have moaned and said, well can we have a taxi? They're then starting to walk to places a little bit more and then in turn it saves them money. So they're saving money and they're in a better situation. They formed a really close network a really close network of friends and that helped with them feeling supported to do this exercise so they felt like they had that support they didn't feel judged they were all in exactly the same boat i think that was really helpful and then in turn that helped with we had uh, girls reporting who were uh, reported with really poor mental health at the start of the program who um, drastically improved um, and weight loss so it was just all in all, and apparently these girls still meet now. So I think this project was done two, two to three, two years ago, something like that. Um, and they're still meeting now. So here's just another, I bummed it full of videos just because I know it's towards the end of the day, but I just love these inspirational sort of videos. So this is the Always campaign that's out at the moment. I don't know whether any of you have seen it already. Okay, so I'm going to just give you some actions to do. I can do the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. <laughs> Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> now throw like a girl. Aww. My name is Dakota and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. Oh, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. Is like a girl a good thing? Actually, I don't know what it really is. If it's a bad thing or a good thing. It sounds like a bad thing. It sounds like you're trying to humiliate someone. So when they're in that vulnerable time, between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult? I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time they're already trying to figure themselves out and when somebody says you hit like a girl it's like well what does that mean because they think they're a strong person it's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as them and what advice do you have to young girls who are told they run like a girl kick like a girl hit like a girl swim like a girl keep doing it because it's working somebody else says that running like a girl or kicking like a girl or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring and you're still getting to the ball on time and you're still being first, you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean, yes, I kick like a girl and I swim like a girl and I walk like a girl and I wake up in the morning like a girl because I am a girl. And that's not something that I should be ashamed of. So I'm going to do it anyway. That's what they should do. If I asked you to, to run like a girl now, would you do it differently? I would run like myself. Do you like a chance to redo it? Yeah. Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race? I just think that's so powerful, so really yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-chick. Yeah. I keep speaking to at the start, we really want to be done. It's quite interesting, wasn't it, the, the way that, it, that when that when girl's asked, what does it mean? She's, well, it's, it's good and bad, mm -hmm. because she was trying to defend 
well, it's like a girl, but she knew it was a put-down. Yeah, and that's how people use it. Yeah, they use yeah. it derogatorily. Mm -hmm. Trying to probably make the word mm -hmm. up there, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so I think um, it's changing that perception ourselves as well, because when the girls first went into the room and they said, well, like a girl to the older girls, they were almost taking the mickey out of yeah. it themselves, so, weren't they? Yeah. And actually, and that's just because they assume that's what people mean by saying it. Mm -hmm. And they jump on that sort of bandwagon with everybody else, that stereotype that it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think we just need to be more like girls and less like women sometimes and not care as yeah. much about what people think. And actually just, we need to change that ourselves before people around us can really start to appreciate that, don't we? And mm -hmm. then when we get that confidence, and you know, I don't care if I run slightly funny, but go out and run on the road and it doesn't matter. When you change that opinion about yourself, that's when everybody else starts to change their opinions too, isn't it? So it's got to come from women themselves to start with. Yeah, I think sometimes we can be our own worst enemy, can't we? Yeah. I don't think we have that, let's do it. Because we've yeah. almost let it happen for so many years that it becomes yeah. acceptable and then it takes seeing something like that for you to realise, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so this was just, um, my coach said I, can, I run like a girl and I said if he ran a little faster he could too. So that's <laughs> yeah. an American football player. I saw that. So yeah, just thought that was quite nice to have him in the background. Um, now I did have a little um, task for us to do, I've got some paper and stuff, but as it's quite a small group we might as well just sort of discuss and, and share what we think our biggest barrier is. I don't know whether you just want to do it in like small groups and then people share it back or whether you just want to discuss all together, but what we think our biggest barrier is to physical activity and what people around us could do to help that or what we're doing ourselves to help that and, and just how do we reduce it? So I don't know, do you want to discuss first and then feedback? <laughs> Sometimes it helps to collate your thoughts a little bit, or you can just want to go through. Yeah, 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 that's fine by me then. That's fine. I guess mine would be total lack of motivation on some days. I just feel tired and yeah. can't be bothered. But isn't it weird though? People say, I'm tired. Yeah. But then when you do it, it, you, do it and you feel, feel moderated, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You weird. soon forget, don't you? And then you yeah. get that pause that, oh, I'm so glad yeah. I went. Yeah. Yeah. Because often I can't sleep in that after I've, after I've exercised because I'm good because of that buzz. It's, it's a funny thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So what could it, would it help you to have um, a support system around you that's like, don't care if you're tired, come on, let's go for a walk? I don't know really, I think it would just have to come from like, in myself. Mm -hmm. I think like, yeah, because I've not got the family thing, like nothing's hold it. The only thing that holds back is I work like 24 hour shifts from nine in the morning until nine the next morning. Oh. So sometimes use that as an excuse, but I've still got an hour break at lunch, so. I think sometimes if you've got a, a class booked, so you've got something you yes. pay, yeah. Yeah. it's a routine, and yeah. because you paid for it, yeah. you would yeah. get yeah. out there. That's a motivation to go for yeah. 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 the discipline. Mm. Yeah. yeah, because I've got a gym membership, but that's not quite enough. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you know, sometimes, yeah. I think, but, but the class thing, I think if I, booked in into that, I think I'd be more inclined. In fact, I know I was I, I, a couple of years ago doing Pilates and it was booked and I was going. And there were some days where I actually just didn't want to go, really. And I would, and had it been a, a big optional thing, I probably wouldn't have done. Mm. You know, but, mm. well, it's just that again. And it's making use of that lunch. I mean, what do you do in your hour break? I know it's a long well, day, so you probably do exhausted. Again. Yeah. But it's just making sure you actually have yeah, because it's too easy to just get on with it and work through it. Yeah. I mean, hour hours quite a long time if you do actually get it. I think like not, I say, I know you're not, you're not always getting it. Yeah. But if you do actually yeah. get that hour break, what does stop you from? No, that's uh, my daughter's just the calendar. <laughs> she's she's there, just the circumstances. She's moved uh, their their fair uh, place of work, and there's there was not a lot to do. And then there's a group of them who've got in the habit. Of going for a walk in their lunch breaks because they, yeah, you know, leaving the, you know, the desk and just, you know, going for a little sort of walk around. But there, because I think there's a there's a few of them that do it. That's, uh, it's that sort of like somebody is saying, say, "Come on, you know," because if you just do, if you just said to yourself, "I'll go for a walk on my own," it's you, so you, true, you, though, isn't it? People motivate yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. So true, because then as soon as one person's like, "Oh, I'm not a big fancy," then it like has a ripple effect. 
Yeah. With our active workplace work that we do, a lot of workforces actually have uh, maps developed. So we uh, plan out a safe walking route around the area that they walk, they work in oh, to then go and and they'll, they'll be different ones and it'll let them know how many steps that is and how long it, how far it actually is. It breaks it all down for them. And that has really spurred people to go out as well and, and the group thing, I just think that really helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, um, well, it's about fucking, uh, fucking October, I decided to try and get back into Ruby. So I downloaded the Couch to 5K app and I've genuinely found it really helped me. My friends all think I'm like working for them because I'm always trying to sell it to them. But just the fact that um, you kind of every time you complete a room, you get a medal and then you get to sort of week three and you get in like a little cup. And I don't know, it sounds really silly, but like, for me, it was really nice to tick off all the time. Yeah, that, yeah that sort of little feedback. Yeah, that's not nice. That did help. Mm. I think, I just think that some, we've all got different ways of, of different, some people are motivated by friends, some people are motivated by rewarding themselves at the end of the week or something. It's a different way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chocolate. Huge. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I have seen myself thinking, come on, I'm just sure I'm just going to walk up and want to get to the 10,000. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but oh, it's like the last thing you know, it's like the rest of the bed. Yeah, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm actually just really close to 10,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, will you just get into bed? I was like, well, no. I've been annoyed with myself and I looked at the next day and I was like, oh, my 9,000. Why did I not look at it? You know, mm. um, so I think it's quite good. Yeah. So if that works for you, does yeah, it? Yeah, I like it. That's great. So, no, yeah. just say you get these little rewards and things like to say you've walked yeah. the yeah. distance of, which is quite Long amazing. Yeah, which I got really one the, okay. a yeah. desert one the other day, and I got one which was a barrier reef, twenty thousand really size of miles. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. It's it's just show you how you you build up your miles every every yeah. week. Yeah. To train. I don't know, it won't look everybody but it has to train for if you're doing like, a charity would prefer it for, the, for a charity that yeah. yeah. to you or I don't know, something. Yeah. Or, Just something like an end goal. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to have an end goal to yeah. work towards. Mm. Yeah. What about yourselves? I don't do much exercise because I've got a heart condition, but okay. I do try and walk a bit. Mm. And I think I'm put off with the different types of exercise. I mean, I couldn't see myself in the gym because I'm not that kind of person. And when I mention to people that I want to get fit, they say, but look at me, you're so skinny. You don't need to lose weight. And I say, well, I'm not doing it to lose weight. I'm just doing it to keep fit and to keep my heart active. And Zumba, I'd like that, but sometimes they can't be too fast. I think I could never keep up. But I know they've got like different yeah. But then are you are you one of the ones that doesn't like to take the options because or would you quite happily if everybody's doing a move and you feel like it's going a little bit too fast, will you quite happily take it down a notch and do it at your, yeah. your level? Yeah. Are you quite to do yeah. that? So I know yeah. some people that won't go to the class because they don't want to take the options. Yeah. And then yeah. actually yeah. it's behind a bit. Yeah. 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 And they think, well I won't do that class because it's too hard and it's like if you work up to it, you, you do it yeah. a bit harder each time or or whatever, but some people get put straight off. Yeah. And that is a high impact yeah. training. Yeah. I think I and prefer to do. do that. Oh, you were well, there? Yeah, because it's five minutes you finish. Well, I think um, it's so to me, to me, yeah. I'd be better for me, I think. Because yeah. then my heart would get a real pump and I yeah. could rest. Yeah. Do you like the group atmosphere as well? Do you like doing it in a class, in a group? Yeah, because I think it motivates you and yeah. you can see you're not the only one who's not. <laughs> I always think there's no get out if I go to a class, so sometimes I can be dragging myself through the door at six o'clock and I finish work and I'm like this. <laughs> well then the second I stand there, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop doing the exercise because everyone can see me. <laughs> so I just think, I just get on with it. <laughs> and what about yourself? What do you think? Oh, uh, oh I don't know really. But you've been really good. I, yeah, I'm trying to think back. I'm, I'm, this, I'm, I'm saying I almost feel like an addict. It's like one day at a time, and I'm really full. And I've been, I've been, I've just been going. I've been trying to incorporate things just in, rather than going into a set routine and go go to a gym or I won't do what to do or whatever. I just think right, I've got a bit of spare time. I can go for a swim. I can go for a walk. We've had, we've got the lift that broke where we were. So you know what. 
it's forcing me, I'm having to use the stairs because I would, I would always go for the lift. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to incorporate it, you know, sort of if, if um, the car park, it, you know, it's, you know, this business of not, you know, parking necessarily that close and think, well, actually, you know what, by the time I've driven to that place, that I probably could have walked it, you know, mm -hmm. and just trying to do things like that. Some, some days are, are better, than, but they're not beating myself up. That's about cool. the fact. It's, and one of our strap lines, small steps, big impact. Yeah. yeah. You don't realise how much of a big impact just all those little things yeah. he's saying, and you're, you're underplaying them because you go, oh, I'm just doing this, I'm just doing that. But that's having well, a big impact yeah. overall. Because I, I know that probably from about, say, November through to January time, I know mm. that I'd say my inactivity was, was massive. You, you say about it, you know about this. I did absolutely nothing at all, you know, and the and the impact on, on how it made me feel, uh, mentally, physically, you know, the same joints and oh, you know, because that for me, I've also got to find something. I've got very bad knee joints, mm -hmm. and I and it, and I find that sometimes I get quite depressed because I used to be really active, and and, and it's so painful now. Yeah. You know, but I know I can't give into it because I know if I do, I will just seize off. It'll get worse. It'll yeah. get worse. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. so that can be quite a barrier really for me. But you know, I'm in positive. Because there's a lot of people that would just sort of say, "Oh, that hurts, so I can't do it." Yeah. But actually, what they don't realise is by can't do it and not doing it, mm -hmm. it's going to hurt more. When yeah. Try and do well, that. It's because the thing is, it's it's getting that balance. If you can overdo it, so you you make things worse. But that I know that if I do some, I it actually helps. It's almost like it's like a. I was thinking that is it kind of lubricating the joints, you know, yeah. so it just yeah. keeps it going. But I know if I overdo it, I can tell it the next day. I think. Yeah. So it's just getting that bad. It's getting to know your own body, your own isn't body, it? Your own limits. Yeah. What works yeah. for you? Your own mind. Mm. Like you say, you like to do it by yourself. You like to go and, and do your exercise. Just you and compete with yourself and other people you like to go to classes and go to a group and do a group thing. And, and it's knowing your own limits and what you want to do. So that's just a little bit of a, um, a summary of that there. So what can we do all together? So there's your suggestions, there's working together, there's supporting one another. Um, even if you would rather go and do the exercise yourself, does it help if you're sharing an app and somebody else is doing it and then you can be like, oh, did you do your last night? You're like running by yourself, but it's just helping with that motivation, isn't it? Um, sharing stories, success stories and failed stories, or, 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 you know, not just always about the positives, because sometimes we learn more from our mistakes and actually somebody saying, oh, I did this the other night and I pushed it a little bit too far and this is what happened with my knees. Somebody else might learn from that or might be able to give you some help or guidance or, or something. And it's just sharing those stories and success stories are fab for really motivating other people as well. Um, make a pledge or a promise to, to one another or to yourselves. Actually, you know, set yourself a goal if that's what works for you. Um, and sometimes sharing that with other people helps them because people don't like to go back on their word if they said to somebody, what they're going to do, doesn't work for everybody. Changing our perceptions, so going back to that like a girl. Um, we've got to change our perceptions about ourselves before everybody around us can really change their perceptions about us. Um, and then recognising one another. I sometimes don't think that females give other females enough credit for what we do. Uh, some are great at it, but sometimes I just think, we don't, we don't pick it up, we don't let them know how amazing they are. And um, I've just put it on there, but as part of our 30 years, we have got an awards uh, ceremony going on later in the year in September. If you know somebody that you think should be recognised for all the amazing stuff that they do in the community, and uh, there's kids awards, they're all getting launched ho hopefully this next week. Yeah, if you think... I'm saying I won, I won that award last year. There you go. Oh, just realised. <laughs> oh, the baton, so nice, the baton, it? wasn't it? it, it was no, I don't know whether it'll be an active Cheshire one, unless they did an awards last year. Sure. Um, but this is our 30 years, it's called Everyday Superheroes, and it can be anyone from... But it's, you know, same concept, so there's no reason for you not to go for somebody to nominate you again. I mean, there's nothing nicer than somebody else recognising that you've done something well. No one likes to recognise themselves, but sometimes it's got to be done. Sometimes we've just got to hold our hands up and say we did good. <laughs> so, uh, the last video from Nike, uh, I just love this. You might have seen it, making the rounds on Twitter, but I just... Another powerful one. If we show emotion, 
one called Dramatic. If we want to play against men, we're nuts. And if we dream of equal opportunity, delusional. When we stand for something, we're unhinged. When we're too good, there's something wrong with us. And if we get angry, we're hysterical or rational or just being crazy. But a woman running a marathon is crazy. A woman boxing was crazy. A woman dunking? Crazy. Coaching an NBA team? Crazy. A woman competing in a hit job? Changing her score? Landing a double cork 1080? Or winning 23 grand slams? Having a baby and then coming back for more? Crazy, 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 and crazy. So if they want to call you crazy, fine. Show them what crazy can do. I mean, it's, it's a little bit off the theme, but I don't think anybody saw there was a, a, a programme on Barbara Streisand oh, right. last awesome. night, and, and, and just the, just what she's done for female as, as you know, sort of singers, and, and but yet she's had, she's been tarred with this, she's a bitch, she's a this, and you know, really not a very nice person, but actually what she's done is she's just been a strong, a strong person, <laughs> a bit like, you know, you, you think of you know, some of the characters yeah. there, you know, some I mean, I don't know how many times yeah. I've seen the likes of Nadal or um, Djokovic slam their racket on the back of the room. Argue with the umpire. Argue yeah. with the umpire. Yeah. And it yeah. gets no way near the attention. Yeah. There was something a little while ago where, I, I don't know whether it was Serena, but one of the female tennis players argued with the umpire and there was a Serena. harsher punishment than when it had yeah. happened with the male. Yeah. And I can't remember the, the exact names yeah. of the ins and outs. Yeah. Um, and yes, it's because, just, because they argued, you know, you wouldn't have done that. To such and such a person, but you did, but you've done it to me, yeah. wasn't it? Was yeah. it, they, 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 it was Serena, yeah. 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 So it's just you know double standards a little bit sometimes, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That is I that is me. That is our suggestion. I hope that was interesting. Feeling that inspired. Oh yeah. 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 Should we all yeah. we'll take the stairs down? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, thank you for saying hello, you don't feel like you're not